Peace, peace, peace. This is the international sales and marketing hitman, Tiger Toledo. And you already know what it is, man. You rocking with the best. You heard? So, I'm going to pull this up. I'm trying to do something on, do something on YouTube, man. I'm going to stream on YouTube, too. So, you know, here, here's, a, here's a funny thing, man. You know, like, as being a business owner, um, building your own business from scratch, you're, you're like this. You have this machine gun, right? And you're like, right? Because everybody gets the smoke. Everybody gets the smoke, right? <laughs> you start off your business with a machine gun. Like, like you literally, if, if, if there was a gun shop, you would say, give me the biggest gun you got, right? The heaviest with the biggest clip. And you're like, I'm going out here and I'm about to go start my business. See you later, general. And you just, <laughs> and you shooting everything, right? You hitting light poles. You're hitting fucking the ground. You're hitting chipmunks. You ain't hitting, you're not hitting none of your intended target. That was me, man. And and you know what? It, I get, it, it takes practice. It takes practice to get there. But as you go on, the, the more businesses, of course, you're gonna have some practice tries. I don't I don't know any successful business person out there that hasn't had practice tries. They have like they had some businesses they started. It just didn't reach the level they needed it to. It's very hard to hit it right out the fucking gate. So. You get these practice tries, and then you realize you're like, damn, you know what? I don't want that machine gun. I want, I want that sniper rifle right there, right? And I'm, I'm gonna you give me the best scope that you have because these machine guns didn't have, don't have scopes, right? Because you're like, gah, 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 like Rambo or, or Arnold Schwarzenegger and, and Terminator and shit, right? So, you grab the you grab the sniper rifle with the best handle, with the one that sh sits on your shoulder, so you mm, you know you can hold it right. It, less recoil, right? Like less recoil, and then you you're, you you need the you need the one that that really zooms in on the target, so so you can hit that target square between the eyes, and then you find a good location. This is different. From the machine gun entrepreneur, the 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 wet behind the ear Similac entrepreneur. You so you grab that. You say, "I'm gonna find me a good location. I'm gonna get posted. I'm gonna post up over here, right?" And, and then and then you just sit and you sit quietly and you have to learn patience, just like most entrepreneurs. You have to have aggressive patience, right? And you see you see your target. You see your target. You see your target. Pop, down goes the target. Down goes the target. Down goes the intended person that you wanted to get for your business. How many times have you gotten all these people interested in your business and none of them was qualified? None, none, just, just garbage, just garbage. But you fine tuned, you tweaked it just like Dr. Dre, I want you to look at it like Dr. Dre or Swiss Beats or, or Timbaland, tweaking the equalizer on the soundboard, just getting that right sound, you know what I mean? Or, 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 or D-Nice, D-Nice just hold, holding the earphone to the ear and just getting it just right, getting the blending right, you know what I'm saying? And then he just merges that song and, and then everybody like, oh shit! Oh shit, D Nice does it again. You have to have patience with yourself. Be patient with yourself, man. Fine tune. You should always be on autocorrect. Listen, God gave us the, the greatest piece of machinery known to man, and it is right in here, right between your ears. It's that brain. That's why they say human beings only use 10% of our brain. Because can you imagine back in the savage life, motherfuckers trying to make a wheel and doing all this and they hunting 
you know, they're they're hunting water buffalo and, and dinosaurs and shit, knife in their mouth, and they diving into a swamp, all that crazy ass shit. Now we got harpoons, we got trackers, and dude, we'll put we'll put a a, a, a number with a tracking sign on a killer whale and see how far he he swims out into the ocean. The technology that this brain produces is is just ridiculous. It is it's it's unbelievable. So I know you guys have what it takes. I know it. I know. I put my money on it, yo. I'll put this beautiful golden, golden $100 bill that I got from Taria Avant on it. I got that much confidence in you guys that you have what it takes. You just have to trust your own judgment. You're asking a lot of people outside of your industry to put you on the game. And they have no fucking clue. None. <laughs> Thank you, What About Bob, legendary motivational word. Hey, you know what? It is what it is, right? It is what it is. Um, we learn how, yeah, you've mastered putting out fires under your followers' followers seat. Listen, how can you be a, a strong leader if you're not willing to run into the, the, the burning building? Your employees ain't gonna do that shit, you crazy? Your employees ain't running into no burning building for your business. You better do that shit. And what happens if you left the gear at home? <laughs> you better run in that shit anyway, right? Oh shit, there's smoke coming over here. Let me duck down. You got to do whatever you got to do to keep your business up and running. And that's why you have to trust yourself, man. Trust, trust what God is telling you. If God is telling you, hey, look, I need you to make these moves over here and get on this podcast. Well, God, I don't know how to do a podcast. Don't worry about that. Just get in there and do it. Look, 90% of the stuff that I do now, I had no freaking clue how to do. But I auto-correct. I'm, I'm, I'm Timbaland. I'm Dr. Dre. I'm tweaking it. I'm tweaking it. Okay, all right, this worked. This didn't work. This didn't work. Do, 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 do. All right, now it's sounding a little bit better. Do, 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 do. Every time that beat goes right, that money coming in. Do, 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 do. Okay, let me, they said I get, let me get some headphones. Do, 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 do. More of this shit is just like fly, flying down, right? Do, 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 do. And it's and it's and it's working. It's working. It's working. That's why I tell you guys document everything. Do I'm gonna I'm share this story about you guys uh, about the, uh, Kanye West's new album, right? And shout out to uh, Malik Youssef, that's my homie out there. He actually writes songs for Kanye West on good music. Let me share this with you guys. So, as you guys know, Kanye West is releasing this album called Donda, named after his mom, right? And there was this influencer that put up a post that said, I know Kanye West is doing the listening party, and that's great. But I wish Kanye West would release the album the way it is now. And over time, as he's tweaking it, he's releasing newer versions of the Donda album. So the audience can see the evolution of that album. Do you know how powerful that statement was? And I think uh, The Shade Room actually put that out there. I think the shade room actually put that uh, that post out there. Do you understand how powerful someone actually said that? They're literally telling, uh, asking Kanye, release that shit as garbage. We don't even care. We just want to see your evolution of you becoming, or or this album becoming this masterpiece. Document everything. Document everything. Listen, that's why I document everything. Like, whatever the hell I'm doing, I document it and then I put it out there. And then if you guys rock with it, y'all rock with it. If y'all don't, so I know there will be a time and place for it. But do you understand that when you bring other people into your existence like that and they, they, they feel a part of them, whether they or not, they 
they feel like they're a part of your life, they, a sense of belonging. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being around somebody that you like, that they got cool ass vibes, right? Or, or their energy is awesome. There's nothing wrong with that. Even if you don't comment or, look, half the people on here right now, I don't know. That's a fact. Half the people on here, I don't know. You, some of them are in Georgia, some of them in Texas. I reach people all around the world. But I love that I get to connect with you guys. Like, what about Bob? What about Bob is sending hella love? He's like, would love to hear you speak on specific instances, the past businesses, jobs. Shit, let's let's get a cracker right now. I had a shrimp and lobster importing business. How many how many Negroes from the hood you know importing shrimp and lobster? I got plenty of friends that was importing cocaine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> My homies was important cocaine. <laughs> I was bringing in shrimp and lobster. I, I went the legal route. So let me explain to you what I learned. Phenomenal, phenomenal experience. One, I learned business to business sales that I can go up to different businesses that were actually sent uh, selling shrimp and lobster, like Lalo's. If you ever been to Chicago, Lalo's. That, you know, some people put shrimp in their margaritas and stuff like that. It, it was a fabulous market. Supermarkets, we went to supermarkets. I did it with my homie, Harold Merlo. Um, he was Honduras, so we was bringing in shrimp and lobster from Ecuador and Honduras. The goal was to build a shrimp farm. The reason why we wanted to build a shrimp farm is because it wasn't subject to weather conditions and politics. See, when you're bringing in stuff from different countries, if, if the country is being war torn and there's like fighting and conflict, it can affect uh, the distribution of your, of your product. So I'm learning all of this shit, right? Never done fucking importing in my life. So I'm learning, I'm like, all right, cool, cool. I'm learning this stuff. I'm learning that the um, farmed raised shrimp was healthier because now they can control the environment for the shrimps to grow and the lobster to grow. So the, the water was the perfect temperature. Um, they put the, the males with the females. Um, it was always clean. It wasn't no pollution. There wasn't any um, like oil spills and shit like that. You know what I mean? Uh, hurricanes and all of this stuff. So it was like, I'm learning all of this shit. Well, come to find out the land that we wanted to build it out in Honduras it wasn't equipped and we could not raise the funding for it. Therefore, we had to shut it down. Um, but we were bringing in shrimp and we got, let, let me just say this, the mafia is heavy in that shit, especially in Chicago. Shout out to fucking Italian mafias. Luckily, my brother was tied in real tight. I, don't ask me how or why. Feds, don't quote me on shit because I ain't saying shit. But my brother was, my older brother was tied in good and he got us, you know, big freezers and stuff like that and we didn't have to pay anything. But it was a wonderful experience um, uh, learning business to business transaction, uh, rolling out a business plan. The most valuable part of a business plan is guess what? The marketing part of the business plan. All that other stuff was bullshit, to be honest with you. Um, it was the marketing. How do you plan to acquire customers? How do you plan to keep customers? What, what's the lifetime value of these customers? How are you going to do the fulfillment of, uh, with these customers? Um, what's the turnaround time? What is, how soon do they need a new shipment? All of that stuff was valuable, right? Um, what else did we learn? Partnership is very, very important, man. You got to do partnership with a person you trust. I trusted uh, Harold. He was a real cool dude. Unfortunately, it didn't pan out the way we needed to. <laughs> shit, shit went bust, right? But we got our name out there. We got the business card. Th that's when I learned um, we spent way too much money incorporating the business, getting flyers, business cards, um, 
all of this extra foo-foo shit before we actually landed clients. Um, we, we came out of pocket thousands of dollars to get all of and that's way before the LLC would go for like $400, $500, right? We were spending thousands of dollars getting all of this stuff done and we didn't have one client. So by the time we realized that the company didn't have its own legs to stand on, guess what? We were out of fucking money. <laughs> we were out of money, man. So that's why I said, hey, look, launch your business first and see if you like it. You might not like it. I'm in a notary business. I did not incorporate my notary business until two years after because I don't know if I want to be in this business that long, right? I might do a couple of notarizations and be like, eh, that ain't for me. And then I, and I split. My wife is a notary. She became a notary and realized that she didn't like going to people's homes and shit like that. So she quit, right? So uh, I went after the money first. And after I got the money, then everything was consumer funded. That makes sense? It was consumer funded. So how did I get my business incorporated? The customers paid for it. How did I get business cards? The customers paid for it. How did I get my website up? The customers paid for it. Instead of me coming out of my own pocket. That makes sense? That makes sense? Uh, let me read somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doctor Tech Jumbo Shrimp. I had, I had, uh, I forgot. Oh God, they 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 have terms for the shrimps, bro. Like, like, they're they're the number of count tiger shrimps. Uh, yeah, small, medium, large, jumbo, and it went by numbers and shit. Like, so when you talk to these um, distributors. And that's the way I learned high levels of distribution. That is what you want in your business, in any business that you have. I want to give you an example. Think about tequila. Just somebody give me the name of their favorite tequila right now. Type in your favorite te tequila. I like Casamigos. That's my shit, right? Casamigos, George Clooney did that. Um, Patron is a powerful one. Um... But think about it this way. If you own a tequila, okay, Casadores, I got to try that one out. I got to try that one out. Uh, what about Bob? So think about it. Imagine Casadores can only have uh, their tequila in three stores. How successful would that uh, tequila brewery be? It wouldn't be that successful. But the more distribution channels that Casadores is in, the, the more that they can uh, be successful. And that was one of the biggest things that I learned with the shrimp importing business because not only did we get into the shrimp, but we was also bringing in imported beer from Ecuador. So we were getting the shrimp from Honduras, we were bringing imported beer from uh, Ecuador. And we would go to these bars and you know, ask them to pick up the beer. We would give them samples. Uh, we oh, it was it was some dope shit. It was cool as hell, dude. Um, and I got to be exposed to um, the Latin market, right? Um, and the more bars we had, the more money that we were able to generate the more exposure we got um it got to the point where like if if we continued on the route that we were doing we would eventually approach companies like anheuser-busch budweiser and and all of these guys now see this is different because i'm not i'm not working for somebody it's like these these are strong partnerships that we had um and, and, and shout out to the Ecuadorian mafia again like this shit is crazy dude like but I want you I want you to listen to this groups control these things so if you think that you're gonna be running things as an individual solo man you better find a group a strong group to 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 link up with that's a fact because it's a plastic example 
Dipset versus the Locks on the versus battle. The Locks came in as a unit, a group like the Navy SEALs, and Dipset came in as individuals. Cameron, Jim Jones, and uh, Jewel Santana. So individuals cannot compete with a group. So you need to lock in with a strong group, like some type of strong support system where they hold you down. In our situation, we had no, we had the intelligence, we had the muscle. It was the lack of capital that was allotted to different areas that we were doing. That was the bad thing. Uh, yeah, Hennessy, Hennessy XO. As you guys know, if you went to the liquor store on any given Friday, especially that's gonna pick up, uh, by the way. So at liquor stores. Uh, on a Friday, you'll find a beautiful woman standing in front of a desk saying, hey, would you like to try our new VSOP, Hennessy? Like, you know, like they're selling the shit out of it in the liquor store. You already know the liquor store sells the Hennessy XO, the white Hennessy, the, the Hennessy VSOP. You already know they sell this stuff, right? But Hennessy is smart enough to know that, hey, we need to get back into people's face. We need to we need to expose ourselves again. And they always have some beautiful ass female there and then some aggressive ass man, uh, salesman there. And they'd be like, what kind of night you about to have? Oh man, you gotta have this with your night. If you pick something up, you need to pick this bottle. Sales, se selling, 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 selling. Next thing you know, weeks later, you wind up buying that Hennessy XO because you had a delightful experience from that. So the distribution is, is key. You got to look at yourself as Sosa from Scarface. You got to look at yourself like 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 Pablo Escobar and shit. You got to look at yourself like 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 Chapo. You know what I mean? High levels of distribution. I need to get my product everywhere. Not you per se. Because you can't be everywhere, but your products can. Example. Shout out, shout out to Taria Avant again, right? She can't be here in Chicago, but her book can. Her book here in Chicago. Awesome book. Your products should be able to be distributed like cocaina. Huh? Is this shit on? Is this microphone on? Am I talking? Sometimes being exclusive distribution can pay off. And I was in the music industry. I'm going to talk about that with you. Uh, what about Bob? Um, exposed to a wire spread placement of products. Yes. So there's this old saying, because I used to work at EMI Records. Um, there's this old saying that goes, too much circulation brings the price down. Very true. Very true. But you must have an auxiliary product that gets floated everywhere. So I'll give you an example. Jay-Z is not gonna pop up at every goddamn club. Jada Kiss ain't gonna pop up at every damn event for him to be doing, you know, spitting his rhymes. Because too much circulation does bring the price down. But he has an album that sells everywhere. iTunes, Spotify, Tidal, Xbox, everything, right? Jay-Z got a goddamn, like a slew of albums being sold everywhere mass distribution massive distribution worldwide distribution but is he everywhere no because it will bring his price down people love mystique they love mystique the more mysterious you can be and shit like so elusive there's something attractive about that it's like it's like watching uh, seeing somebody with a with an Artemoir watch, right, or or, or um, a Bergdorf bag or something like you know the bag is not something that you're gonna see this alligator this blue alligator bag, right? Um, you, you know, shit costs like five thousand dollars. Not the average person is gonna walk. I mean, wear that, right? So when you do see one, <laughs> you're like amazed. You're like, wow, this is fantastic. This is amazing craftsmanship, right? Because it's elusive. 
there's a mystique behind it. It's it's and they separate that with the price. Pricing when you're pricing your company and you're pricing your products, if you're looking for a certain caliber of clients, a certain quality of clients, pricing is the best disqualifier. That's why I never recommend that someone always try to be the lowest or the cheapest. Because when you do that, you start to, your, your, people will look at your product like, eh, nah, it's fucking $20, eh, right? They don't give a shit about it. But when you're a Starbucks, you come into the game like a Starbucks, and your <laughs> your your coffee is 150 to 300 times more than the Dunkin' Donuts or the Mick Cafe. There's something intriguing about that to people. This, I didn't make this shit up. I did not make this up. This is psychology. They even did a test on Monopoly. For those that love Monopoly, right? They did a they did a psychological test with over a hundred people in Monopoly, and they gave they had two players there. One they gave them a high advantage. You get to start up every time you go over on go. You get two hundred dollars instead of a hundred dollars. Um, we're gonna give you extra property. We're gonna give you um, two dice to roll instead of one dice, right? So they're, now they're observing, they got the cameras and shit, looking at people. And every time the person that had more of the economic advantage rolled the dice, they noticed that they would take the, the, the Monopoly piece and hit the board aggressively, like really, really hard. Because they're demanding authority, right? Versus the person that didn't start off with a lot, every time they went around, they only collect a hundred dollars, or they didn't, uh, they only could roll one dice, and they did not get extra property. They noticed that that person was very timid. That person, um, because they would have a bowl of pretzels for both of them, right? The person that was actually in the financial in a better financial state was eating more pretzels. They was a little more confident and cocky, right? They would they'd eat more pretzels. The person that was more in a bad situation did not eat the pretzels. That person was more timid, more reserved, more scared. And then the reason why I'm uh, illustrating the story is that's why I create this cash flow shit for you guys. <laughs> that's why I create, because I know the difference. There is a big ass difference, man. Come on, like, like, who the fuck comes into life and wants to be broke? Who? Not me? I don't be like, you know what? Shit is kind of cool when I was broke. No, it wasn't. It was not. Shit ain't so bad, you know, being broke. I got, you know, I'm, 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 I'm I got a bunch of friends. And fuck that. Who don't like having a nice whip to pull up in? Who doesn't like? Being confused of what restaurant should I eat? Should I have Italian? Should I have Indian? Should I have Chinese? Well, what do I want to eat? It's it's a great fucking feeling. Or, hey, pack up the family. Let's go on a trip. Who doesn't want to be in that, man? Don't, don't lie to yourself, y'all. Like, for those that be like, money ain't everything. It doesn't bring you happiness. Stop the lies. Stop the lies. Get the money shit out the way. Get the money shit out the way. Like, concentrate on the bread. Get the money shit out the way. And then watch how everything else opens up to you. I love options. Don't you love options? I love options. Only having a primary business, a, a primary place of business registered, a boy physically being in the state. I have no idea what that meant. <laughs> um... There's too many options out here. When they're talking about multiple streams of income, it's not multiple streams of income where it's like, I'm a barber, and then I'm going to jump into fucking real estate, and then I'm going to jump into rent-a-car business. 
That's not what they mean when they're talking about multiple streams of income. It means like if I'm a barber, maybe I might create a book talking about being a barber or create a course on how to build a six-figure barber business or maybe offer some tutoring, a mentorship to young barbers or opening a barber college or, you know, this is multiple streams of income within the same sector that you're in. It's not talking about you going from industry to industry to industry to industry because there's a big learning curve that you have to go through. And unless you have a mentor and you have the bread to drop on a, a, a mentor that got skin in the game, man, dude, you're gonna, you're gonna waste a lot of time. You're gonna waste a lot. Everything I do now is in the notary business, whether it's an online course, whether it's a book, whether it's me doing notarizations, whether it's me uh, dispatching notaries for my agency, everything is based around the goddamn notary business. Until this shit is running on its own, or I franchise it, or I, I fucking sell it off to the highest bidder, then I'll move on to the next thing. But as of right now, there's too much gold. You understand? There's too much oil here. There's too much oil in this notary industry for me to say, hey, I can't find any gold over here. Let me fucking go out to California and see if I could dig up gold over there. If I'm in a market like Chicago and, and it's gravy over here, listen, you guys can definitely penetrate your market on a level. I did my steady stamping. Let me share this with you and then I'll, I'll jump off real quick. I did my last steady stamping. Um, we did book publishing secrets. Shout out to everybody that uh, bought the steady stamping course, right? I showed the students how many books are literally out there for notaries. Now, the notary industry has been around way before the 18th century. That's how old this industry is. There's probably less than 10 books on how to become a successful notary. Like, what? A, let's just say, what about Bob, right? Let's say you have the R01 capabilities, right? You know how many you know how many notaries would purchase a book just off of that? If you if you're seasoned and you know what the hell you're talking about when it comes to RONs, do you know how many notaries are literally looking for books on how to successfully execute RONs in their state? The mark I don't know if you got this is one of my favorite books ever. Blue Ocean Strategy. Explain what Blue Ocean Strategy is. You don't want to be in a position where you're fighting and you're cutting off other notaries' heads off to bid for a goddamn assignment. That is called the Red Ocean. That is the blood shark infested ocean. You don't want to be there. You want to be in the uncontested blue ocean where there's plenty of food. There's plenty of space for to run, uh, uh, swim, and, and gain momentum. Snap docs will put a damn assignment up. Every goddamn uh, notary is shooting at each other. Boom, boom. I'm going to take that bid. I'm going to take that assignment. Boom, 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 boom. Cutting each other necks, stomping them, harpooning the chest, all kind of crazy shit. You, build, you bid for 50 bucks. I'm going to bid for $45. I'm going to get this assignment. It's Mayhem. It's like piranhas going after the same piece of meat, biting each other in the melee. That's not where you want to be. You want to be here. This beautiful blue ocean. Uncontested charters of water where there's plenty of food because you created it for yourself. You created it for yourself. You're not going where everybody goes. You know, you know what the story is. Go ahead and follow the masses and you got to get exactly what the masses have. You know that. The story's been the same for years. Follow the masses. You got to get exactly what the masses have. Straight up. So Michigan, for example, is about to have the RON capabilities for notaries, empires. Uh, Whitmore will have to extend it, but she might not. So here's the thing with RONs in Chicago, right? And trust me, I, I surveyed the hell out of this market when it came to RONs because 
when coronavirus, they're going to block my video and shit and whatever. But when the virus um, hit, started hitting around, what, what was it, March 2020 or whatever, um, the governor said, all right, these are the three companies you have to go with uh, when it comes to R1. So I'm like, all right, boom, let me hit, let me put on my thinking cap. Let me get a survey. And I want to see how many phone calls I'm getting. This is the best way to survey it. I want, I want to write down all of the phone calls that I'm getting that people are requesting RONs. And I'm like, all right, all right. So I get one. Months go by. I get another one. And then a few months go by and then I get a third one. But then the third one was the person that that was that called the first time. So it was really only two phone calls in over a year. So right there that told me that this there is not a high demand. That's why it's so important that you do not follow the masses because you follow the masses you you paying to get certified, you're paying for the damn software, you're going through the learning curve to get the RON and then you realize that there's no fucking market for the RON in your in, in your area. Yeah. You know what I mean? You you realize there is no high demand for RONs in your market. So I was like, it's not enough for me to explore getting the RON because I've only really received two phone calls in a year and a half. Now, if I was getting quite a few phone calls, do you guys offer RON? Do you guys offer that? Do you guys offer that? Then hell yeah. I'd be like, okay, this is a this is a cash cow. Let me jump into this. That way we can take some of this RON money that's coming in. But no, the demand wasn't there. At the end of the day, Surprisingly, there's still a lot of people out here that just aren't as tech savvy as we think they are, right? So for them to set up the webcam and scan their their documents through and then, you know, upload their their, their photo ID, the, the kid, they just don't care. They're like, oh, look, dude, can you just come over? <laughs> when you said three companies you had to go with, could you explain? Yeah, so the three companies, I know Notarize was one of them. Um, Notarize.com was one of them. And then they had like two other, hold on, let me see if I pull it up. They had like two other companies and shit that they was going at. And so they were like, basically they cornered the market, right? They cornered the market to the point where it was like, these are the only three companies that you can use um, for our win. And I'm like, first of all, I don't like being... Um, in a position like that because if I was in a position like that I'm going to charge the most because it's state mandated right so like the state says you can only use us so if you're selling me that that means I can go up really high on my prices Okay, here it is. So the three companies. <laughs> yeah, so the executive order. Uh, Pritzker. Just looking for the companies real quick. And then, you know, like 
it was it was a temporary it was a temporary um man, mandate so it wasn't it wasn't even something that it was like all right you gotta do this this way all right so they took the companies down maybe they lifted up the um maybe they lifted up but it was yeah it was march 26 2020 that they signed the executive order it was just a temporary thing um and then you know we had to get certain type of software um because i looked into the companies so here here's the funny thing man the companies that i looked at right we had to out of pocket every month it, because it was a monthly thing I probably would have came out of my pocket maybe a hundred and something dollars every single month. That's with the um, the software. Um, then there was this um, the security thing that you had to push through so it can see if this person is who they say they were. Um, and then it was like, of course, you have to keep the records of it for about three years. Um, and then they had to be a vid you had to do a video conference with that person. So yeah, it was a bunch of shit, which was very, very painstaking. You know what I mean? It was it wasn't streamlined. It was something that you just it, you had to jump through a bunch of hoops. And then so the the amount of money I would have had to pay out of pocket, and this was with the cheapest company, it would have been you know closer to like a hundred, hundred fifty bucks. Um, and then you better hope that you <laughs> people need that service because if you're not if people don't need that service you're just you're, you're just hemorrhaging at that point like your business is just taking a hard hit so yeah um, Michigan I don't know what it's like for Michigan uh, to be honest we we dispatch in Michigan all the time um, we don't we do not get anybody asking for a remote online notarization. The only time we've ever had somebody asking for a remote online notarization was in Texas. Uh, and then the person was uh, a doctor. They were in Japan. They were in Japan and they needed to do a RON in Texas. Um, after, after everything was said and done, the guy that was going to charge us in Texas, after he told me all of the shit that he had to do, he said, yeah. I said, well, so how much is your fees? He said, 40 bucks. And I was like, you do all of that for just $40? I was like, just off of that alone, I didn't want to do it. Because it was like so much that it was included. But this guy was like, he was... He was good. He was just like, I get to sit at home. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to leave. You know, I'm, I'm just processing RONs. And I was like, look, if I ever need you in Texas, you are my dude. Hands down. I charge the customer 150 bucks, 200 bucks. This guy does it for me for $40. So it's, it's a great profit margin for me. Wonderful profit margin for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Texas got it popping. Um, I know. I know Florida. They do a lot of hybrid, hybrid uh, closings, um, especially because there's a lot of title companies out there, right? Uh, there, you shit. It's like tourist. It's tourist land. Like all they do is fucking uh, goddamn timeshares all the goddamn time. If I tell you how many damn timeshare cancellations that I do here in Illinois, these people think that they're gonna go on a boat or they're gonna get a free ticket to Walt Disney World and then they're gonna go just sit down and talk to one of these guys and there's nowhere they're gonna buy anything. These guys are hired guns, right? These timeshare people are assassins. They will eat their young. That's how good they are. You think you're going to go in there and get some free tickets to Cirque du Soleil or, 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 some, or free cruise and shit? And then you walk, you walk out with a goddamn timeshare package. 
So they come back after the cruise and stuff, and then a year later, they're canceling their timeshare package. So Florida is really good. Shout out to Florida. They made me a mint. They made me plenty of money. <laughs> But I hope you guys got value out of this, man. I wish you guys the very best. Peace, love, and cash flow. If you guys need some free resources, go to my link. Um, check out some of the webinars. We do free webinars for our notaries every single month. I show you guys how to get to this bag. Um, ain't no fun if my homies can't have none. You know what I mean? So I wish you guys the best. Happy cash flow and steady stamping, baby. Talk to you guys soon. You heard?